Hi, my name is Ayman Enriquez, and as I'm sure my classmates have said, um, our project is on racial discrimination. Um, we did four different subtopics, um, starting with mine. Mine was the school to prison pipeline. There were also subtopics on healthcare disparities, as well as racial profiling and um, the racial disparities in prison populations. Um, so I'll start with mine. Uh, what I learned is about the school to prison pipeline is that it really is a real thing. Um, I've heard it a lot in high school as well as in college that this is a very real thing, but I had never really seen any data to show it. It was just kind of something that was said. Um, and amongst doing all my research, I learned that there are significant fines. And in mine in particular, I learned that there are a lot of things that contribute to it. So one of the things that we saw was um, punishment from schools was a big determining factor. So we also found out that, um, as my social media post said, that black youth are almost two times more likely to be um, expelled or suspended from school for the same, uh, for the same, I don't want to say crime, for the same... Um, consequence as a, a white student would um it could be the exact same thing but black youth will most of the time still get more severe punishment um another in including uh, factor was with parenting um, a lot of parents were stricter and depending on how the parents raised them was how they kind of valued themselves with also within value their value would contribute they would contribute their value to um, how well they did and a lot of times we see that in um, in the research that they find that black youth again um, find themselves you know stuck in work situations and unfortunately that is something that we have to fix and uh, as for my other um, classmates I'm sure we'll explain. Rupa and I decided to focus on racial discrimination for our project I noticed that with the rise of the movement Black Lives Matter, there's been a big shift in our conversation. A lot more people were talking about the experiences of the racism and discrimination, and I thought it was important to keep building on that subject and to spread more awareness. For my deliverable, I decided to talk about racial disparities in healthcare. I knew about racial inequalities in the criminal justice system and even in education, but not much in healthcare. I started learning a lot more about it when I started doing this project and even in one of my classes. One of the things that stood out to me the most when doing this was the fact that black women are more likely to die during childbirth than white women, specifically three to four times more likely. I was confused as to how healthcare workers could allow this to happen and let pregnant, women, let pregnant black women be more susceptible to death. But I also learned that healthcare professionals usually buy into stereotypes of different racial minority groups which might have led to this, like the stereotype that all black women are strong and fierce. The stereotype itself may seem positive and even uplifting, but it has negative impacts. Like it gives off the idea that black women can handle more than regular women, that you can load more responsibilities and a lot more hardships and they'd be fine with it. Connecting this to the fact that Black women are three to four more times likely to die during childbirth. Healthcare providers may neglect the needs of black women because they believe that they can handle more compared to their white counterpart. Something else I know that I learned was that language barriers adds to the inequality in healthcare. While federal guidelines emphasize the importance of interpreters and culturally adapted healthcare information, a lot of these are met with, hesita with hesitation and resistance. Also, even with Interpreters, non-dominant racial or ethnic groups may not have an interpreter to help them. If our healthcare cannot meet the needs of a more diverse area, it can lead to greater inequalities. Also, a lot of healthcare professionals may not be as culturally sensitive towards different ethnic and minor ethnic and racial groups, which can lead to greater distress and even underplaying their patients' health concerns. I think that the U.S. is so diverse and so many different ethnic and racial groups live here, there would be a lot more cultural sensitivity. However, thinking, thinking on that, it was a lot, it was really naive for me to believe that. 
since racism is systemic and is inherent in, and and is inherent in all our institutions. The only thing I can do about this now is to spread more awareness and to be more aware of what I feel mistreated or discriminated against in healthcare. Hi everyone, my name is Amy and I am. Our civic engagement project is on racial discrimination and it's going to be divided into four topics. So I will be talking about racial profiling and my classes will be covering um, the topics in disparities in education, the disparities in healthcare, and disparities within the criminal justice system. So racial profiling is the use of race and ethnicity as grounds for suspecting someone of having committed a crime. I have seen racial profiling firsthand, you know, being Hispanic and knowing people who were wrongfully committed of a crime that they didn't do because of the color of their skin. So racial discrimination is one of the most common social issues that we face in the United States and more people should be talking about that. And with this topic, I learned that police officers engage in out of place racial profiling in drug law enforcement. You know, they tend to target suspects whose race is inconvenient with that neighborhood's racial context. And I also learned that black males are 2.5 times more likely to be killed by police than white males. And I also learned that dying at the hands of law enforcement is a leading cause of death among young black people. An example, you know, of this would be the most recent events of the tragic death deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, whom both lost their lives at the hands of law enforcement. Two different types of situations that took a turn down the same path because of racial discrimination. And, you know, we as a group believe that spreading awareness and educating others on these topics will help contribute to creating a safe, safer environment and a better change for the future. Hello, my name is Javier Perez and our project was on racial discrimination. Um, we researched and look in, looked into the fields of healthcare, education, and uh, racial profiling, as well as the criminal justice system. So I focused on the criminal justice system. Um, my deliverable showed a table where there's a large racial disparity in the um, U.S. prison population. So if you look at it, you can notice that minorities, especially African-Americans, are incarcerated and imprisoned at higher rates than whites. Um, this is the case for most minorities. But the important thing to remember when it comes to this is not only are they imprisoned more at higher rates, but they do not make the same portion of the U.S. population. Their population in the U.S. is much smaller, and that is the biggest problem is that they are in prison more and at higher rates, but make up a smaller population in the U.S. Um, relating to that, the factors I learned about um, include prison sentencing, and um, for African Americans and people of color, their prison uh, sentences tend to be more um, severe, despite um, committing similar crimes. So, for example, if you look at drug offenses, which is typically what people of color are arrested for and imprisoned for, um, a white person that commits a drug offense might serve uh, no years or be put on probation, whereas a person of color would look at a few years in prison where the only difference is their race. And this also relates to racial profiling because they are stopped more um, also forces used more often on them so they are arrested more jailed more and for longer times um, versus their white counterparts and this also contributes to what happens after being imprisoned so people of color also have higher rates of homelessness after being imprisoned and they have fewer career opportunities so these racial disparities are important to think about when it comes to reformation of the criminal justice system, as well as bringing awareness to the problem.